Um, so here's a here's a hard question for you. But I think you're up to the task. Sure. Who's your favorite teacher? Uh, so far, my favorite teacher has been Tim White. Um, he's a friend of mine that has shared some Nagong and uh, Reiki and uh, Vajrasattva um, basics for the meditation for, I believe it was uh, Nyingma is the lineage of uh, Vajrayana that comes through. So training with him was great, um, completely non-martial. Um, he does not want to pass that on. He does have some pretty strict requirements for how you do the Nagong and um, how to integrate the Nagong into like your martial arts forms and that sort of thing. And so because of him, I got into like Reiki. And uh, so I actually brought my favorite Reiki books. <laughs> so these are <laughs> excellent. Um, you know, that's actually been my my biggest thing through the last few years is, is getting into Reiki because let's face it, most people don't want to do Kung Fu. You know, they want to meditate and they they want to do yoga. And so they come for Qigong and then they come for Reiki. <laughs> Nobody wants to fight unless they're already an experienced martial artist, usually in, right. in my experience. So would you um, uh, send me those uh, book titles and I'll put them in the description? Oh, sure. Oh sure. God. Yeah. These are, these are some great books. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, you know, kind of like Kung Fu Reiki is one of those things where, you know, it's filtered from Japan to the West. And so, you know, there's people that don't know the language and there's people that learn things at different levels and then they have students and, you know, some people are like 17th generation Reiki masters it's like how um are there that many people between you and Mikao Sui <laughs> you know so that that that's the other side of it is is you know I did get a very fortunate encounter with a very traditional line um and then locally I I connected to the Jikadin line as well um for my master level attunements so um most of what I do is like a Buddhist healing uh for reiki it doesn't have any like uh angels and stuff you're not going to hear me praying to jesus <laughs> but uh, is your reiki you know. are you are you doing it mainly for yourself do you actually treat others what oh yeah yeah i treat like? others i teach the art um so the teaching the art is is usually the more difficult side of things treating others is is um like the level two level three is is where you're a master healer and instructor so that's that's where i am so excellent it's um, um it's pretty difficult uh to find uh, legit people <laughs> much like kung fu you know it, it's you got to know a guy who knows a guy to tell you the real stuff you know <laughs> yeah well americans think if you just open up your wallet then everything happens you know um yeah and and the real people they don't want you to pay with money they want you to pay with attention you gotta pay attention Right. And, and so, you know, that, that's the thing is like, I hear, you know, some of these people, they're like, oh yeah, I just got my Reiki level three. And, you know, I went through level one and two the weekend before and level three this last weekend. And now I'm ready to go heal the world. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I did, I did like a whole year long, like apprenticeship with this guy. And then we learned Reiki at the very end because that was the easy bit. <laughs> You when know. when the masters start throwing out uh, a decade, 10 years, when they go, hey, you're, you're a beginner for 10 years, or they'll say 10 years is nothing. Um, it can be very scary. And that can, it can weed the, it can, uh, you know, separate the wheat from the chaff. But yeah. it's actually very accurate. Uh, if you look back 10 years, you can have a really good snapshot. Have I improved? Have I been running in circles? Am I on the right path? Um and, and, you know, some things just take a long time to, to get, How you know, internal work. Um, external work is easy. Just go to the gym, start lifting weights. You'll notice in a month. Um, internal stuff, it's a sheet of paper of progress a day. Right. And, and you know, the internal stuff, the other thing is it's not just your journal. It's, it's how does that manifest in your life, you know? And, and so when you're really working to help other people, um, you know, like, what is your motivation? Is it just to make money? Or is it to be a small business person? Is it to be recognized as the local witch? Like, you know, like, what is it that you're, you're really trying to do and accomplish? And so for myself, um, over the summer, I got what's called a, a peer support certification. So 
um, you know, I, I hope to help people stay um, in a recovery mode, you know, so uh, things like PTSD, alcoholism, that sort of thing. That's, that's what a lot of the people that come to me for Reiki are, are seeking help with is, is, you know, PTSD, anxiety, uh, staying sober. So that's, that's primarily what my, uh, my teachings are for geared that way, you know, like I don't have, um, the same sort of, uh, motivation, you know, like I'm not going to be out at, at the networking events and doing this, that, and the other, and be like, oh yeah, I do Reiki everywhere. Um, because I don't, I don't really want to teach everybody. <laughs> I want to teach people that need the help and, and those that, that do really need it, you know, talk to me, like my rates are high, but you know, there's, there's a, a an in need discount, <laughs> you know, I'm a person and, um, I understand when other people are struggling and you get what I've you been, pay for. Right. Right. And, and sometimes, you know, if you pay nothing, you get treasures. <laughs> no, I shock people when I tell them like in 2000 and, well, from 19, 1993 to 2007, I took private classes with Master Choi. $250 an hour. Mm. Right. So do the math. I'd be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, eight hours a day on Thanksgiving weekend. Or, you know, I'd go there for a day or something. Um, but I can tell you that worth every penny. And then Master Leong... Um, because he was independently wealthy, um, he would charge you by the head. And so I think it was $40 an hour, and there was eight of us in a private class, and it got whittled down to just me. I still paid $5. And he was like, and I would hand him the five. I mean, I felt bad about it. Right. You know, on one level. And he was like, you know, sir, should I give you the, the you know, $35 more? Your rate is 40 an hour. Can you imagine 40 an hour with the master? And he'd go, nope. Five dollars a person. I mean, he knew I was a poor guy, and right. it's just you know the, the the money thing. But on one level, you gotta in martial arts or healing, you have to yeah, that has to go away. And then right. the people that are gonna nickel and dime you, they're gonna nickel and dime themselves. Mm -hmm. That's right. And and you know my my students, they they all say like I am so grateful that I found you because you answer my questions. You're there for me when I need it. Like if I have a struggle, you're reaching out and like, Hey, you do need a free Reiki session or, you know, come to class. Like, wow, how are you doing? You know, it's, it's a relationship. I feel like that, that people are here for, right? Like I'm not trying to set myself up as a guru. Um, I don't, I don't really gravitate toward that, that sort of teacher myself. Um, so, you know, I don't want people to be like, Oh yeah, Matt's the best ever. Um, what I do want them to do is approach me with, with questions. And if I don't know something, I'll, I'll pass it on, you know, I'll be like, Hey, I, I'll got to find this out somewhere else. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I think and, it was Napoleon Hill said, um, people don't care how much, you know, people care how much you care. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, is I want this idea of a kung fu family or a reiki family you know like this whole lineage thing you should treat them like they're your family like they're good people that you want around that you want to hang out with you know um i don't i don't want to hang out with abusive family members and i don't and so i don't want that dynamic in my kung fu family in my reiki family you know like that's that's not for me <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, uh, we have to share this. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this off camera, but uh, my grandfather was in the Jewish mafia mm. because he was French Canadian. He couldn't get into the Italian mafia. <laughs> so he was in the Jewish mafia in Boston. He was a rum runner. Uh, the, the, the guy, the, the, the leader was a guy named uh, uh, Charles King Solomon. And um, you and I have a very similar upbringing, which I don't want to talk about on camera, but, um, yeah, my uh, grandfather's family was like know, that. <laughs> uh, yeah. this is, this is a, you know, martial arts, uh, it, it, it's an amazing art. It brings so many people together. Um, one thing I'd like to ask you, um, cause this is one of my passions is teaching and learning different parts about teaching. I'd like to ask you your opinions on teaching and learning with Zoom or online teaching and learning. 
I love it. I feel like it's one of the best things to happen to our group in in years. Um, there are so much that's opening up that's available that you can engage with on your own time. Um, I have a massive library of videos. Um, I have paid for a number of courses through the years just to see what, you know, the other line does, you know, like there's no secrets, right? Like if you don't practice it, you can't get it. So <laughs> uh, that's the you know, secret I, you just told everybody. Right. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that that's the thing is like, I love to see what it is they're doing because like, how does that relate to us? And, and what is it that I do that is similar to that? And how can I put that into what I do? Or, or do I need to switch gears and actually go and learn that? You know, like that's, that's the other thing too, is that we have the ability to market to people in a way that is not available prior. You know, like you sent me a pamphlet from one of my Gung Fu uncles on the Kenny Kong style uh, recently. And thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Um, I saw it. I knew you had to have it. <laughs> Dude, that was that was great. I was like, oh man, this is wonderful. Um, because it's such a unique style of Xing Yi, like everything's in Cantonese, you know. <laughs> Which is how I learned from uh, Master Choi. All my my uh, I had seven Xing Yi teachers, all first six Mandarin, and then the most deepest one, number seven, is all Cantonese. Uh so I had to, you know, I feel like when you read all the Xing Yi books, it's like you guys gotta translate the Cantonese. Right. <laughs> And you know, my, my, um, my Kung Fu family, they're like, I, I don't know what you're saying. Like one of them, he speaks Mandarin. And so like, when I use the, the Mandarin terms, he's like, oh, okay, well, I know what that is, but like, I was taught it in Cantonese. So I didn't know that's what that was. Like, they didn't really even show the characters for a lot of this stuff. So people even might know Chinese. They just don't know what the character actually is, you know? And, and so that's one of the big values I have in, in uh, material like what Andrea Falk puts out. Um, you know, that's, that's some amazing stuff that she's got translated for the world. <laughs> well, Ma Master Choi spoke Cantonese or speaks Cantonese. And he told me one time he was talking with someone from mainland who spoke Mandarin. And he said, man, I can't understand them. It was like a duck talking with a chicken. <laughs> Yeah, and and you know that's that's one of the things that I find really interesting is, um, you know, you could be a completely identical ethnic group in China, but if you grow up in a different place, you you'll have a completely different spoken language, right? Like that that blows my mind that you could have a place where it's mostly Han Chinese ethnically, and the spoken language is so different from place to place. Well, you know, and I, and I always pick up these Chinese martial art books, and I thought that they were just full of secrets. <laughs> you know, and then when people translate them, it's like, move right foot, do this with your left hand. And, um, right. you know, the same thing with English. I mean, I can read a book on uh, whatever, nuclear, thermo, uh, some kind of deep medical thing. I can read it. I just don't understand it. Whereas the people that understand it, it doesn't matter whether they read it or not. Right. And, and you know, I, I really value the people that are available on the Internet now um, because you'll have people coming out of the woodwork to tell you the right information. Like, I saw you say something on your podcast and, you know, I'm an acupuncturist and this is what's going on here and blah, blah, blah. And they'll really give you like the lowdown, right? And, and so I feel like we have an opportunity with the technology that we have now to get people together and, and really just like put our egos aside. Like, let's make one big Xing Yi school. Let's make one big Bagua school, regardless of, you know, where your lineage comes from. Let's get together and practice and fight and, you know, do Nei Gung and, and, you know, like, hey, you got a diamond, I got an emerald. And, you know, this guy's got a ruby and exactly. that guy's got a sapphire. <laughs> I'm glad to hear, I'm glad to hear that, you know, hear you speak about this. I've been doing an experiment now for two months, which is I'm doing Zoom pushing hands classes. So obviously you have to have a partner, right? which is interesting because some people sign up, they don't have a partner, but they're doing it in the air, which, you know what, if you show up, I'm, I'm going to teach you, um, but I'm <laughs> doing some experiments and I've got a couple of guys, they're, they're from like Idaho. I've never met them, um, but they're, they're coming the once or twice a, a month and then they're practicing on their own. And, and again, it's being able to reach them. They can't come to Minnesota. And right now I'm not going to go to Idaho. Um, I really think this is a great opportunity there. There has to be some of the basics. Um, 
I was talking with somebody else who said, yeah, if somebody wanted to learn on Zoom and had no experience, you'd have to gear that class a, a lot differently. But um, some of the people that we meet who have even just a little bit of experience, you can quickly get them to, um, you know, as close to the class experience as you as you can. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's, it's huge. And um, I, I, you know, since COVID, my whole teaching has like burst out, it's, it's expanded. And uh, I'm excited. I mean, uh, you know, uh, talking with you here today is like another part of that. It's just been, you know, really good. It, it has been wonderful. And, you know, there's a lot that can be passed on in a seminar. If you're willing to let people touch you, if you're willing to let people ask questions about what it is you're doing, and if you're not like trying to give them a puzzle, right? Like here's what it really is. Like, just do this. Um, you know, I met Doug Corp long ago recently, and he had a, Beijing 24 seminar. And I, I just wanted to, you know, go to the push hands class and see what he felt like really to meet my Kung Fu uncle, you know, like, Hey, I'll go to the Tai Chi seminar. And, you know, I was really pleased that when we're doing the push hand stuff and the form work, he's like, you know, feel my back, feel my foot, feel my, my hip, feel my, my belly, you know, feel my chest, what's going on here, put your hands in these different places as I do this like really trying to get people to understand what it is that we're trying to impart, you know? And, and that is, is something I feel like many people miss. You know, if you don't have a teacher that's generous enough to say, okay, I'm, I'm sitting here in this stance, like feel how my elbow is sinking and going down, you know, like, like that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's necessary, you know, like there are bits that have to be felt, but at the same time, once you have an idea as to what you're trying to do and you have like a path to get to the, like the next seminar, these people are definitely going to improve, you know, like that's the beauty of it. Amen, brother. That That's what I feel. Like, I think we can get a bunch of it done. You know, if a pitch is worth a thousand words, a touch is worth 10,000. Right. And so if people are working on it and then they can get a couple of you know sessions just feeling it or whatever um i i really think there's you know a hybrid between you know uh weekly classes which i teach here but that's limited you have to be here um right. seminars which is you know kind of seasonally but zoom i i mean i'm really i'm excited to um to see where we can we can go with this and uh yeah you know like uh some kind of hybrid um, there are some people that say, no, you can't learn from Zoom. And, and you know, I'm still I'm still uh, I'm very hopeful and, uh, uh, you know, trying to find out. So that's why I'm picking your brain, too. I mean, if a whole bunch of us are working on this, I can only tell you to find out, you know, what really works. You know, I, I do a lot of video learning. Honestly, I do. Um, I, I will sit down and watch a video for hours at a time and then, and then go back and forth. I don't feel like it's really that much different than having an instructor in front of me for a weekly class. You know, I may not be able to touch that person, but sometimes you go to a weekly class and you don't touch the instructor the whole class. You know, you're just working on footwork or whatever it is you're doing, right? So there are definitely things that we can practice. Like you can put tape on the ground, like measure out angles. Like there's things that you can do at home to really make sure that you're in the right space and alignment and that sort of thing um you know like there's there's training aids that we we have developed through the years and that we can keep working on like there's so many things when i go to physical therapy i'm like oh man if i had that thing in a kung fu class you know i could i could really get this concept across <laughs> well exactly it, you know and, and uh, because you have experience then you can bring that experience to learning from this and and then so it doesn't matter. It's like chicken and the egg. Was your first class Zoom or was your first class in person? And then it's just it's just going to it's going to be like a ladder. You know, I'm 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 really thinking that, uh, you know, we're going to be able to get uh, get a lot of information out there. And, uh, you know, this whole thing about, uh, uh, you know, there's there's plenty of there's plenty of students. There's no shortage of students. So anybody that's like, you know, jealous or I don't want you to learn from that guy or I don't want to whatever there's. There's plenty of students. I'm a student. You're a student. There's plenty of masters. There's plenty of stuff to learn. I mean, this is, you know, the age of Aquarius, the age of information. We are really, uh, we're spoiled for choice. And yeah. I'm just, I'm absolutely, I'm loving it. Uh, so I, I'm going to change our, our focus a little bit. It's going to sure. be a couple of personal questions, super personal for you. 
Um, they're easy. Oh, they're really easy, Matt. Don't you worry. <laughs> so, Matt, I'm going to ask you this question. It's kind of a doozy, but uh, you know there's no wrong answer. What is your happiest memory and why? Um, <clears throat> that's, that's it's a, a tough one. Yeah, you know, the past five years with my little boy have been really great. And honestly, one of, one of the happiest moments I've ever had, I, I made my little boy spaghetti. And, um, you know, he's not very uh, complex in his desires for his palate. And so I just made a real basic, you know, fresh marinara sauce for him and served him up some spaghetti. And he's like, Daddy, you're the best cooker ever. I can't believe how good this <laughs> spaghetti is you know and I was just like oh man my heart is so full thank you, you know? sweet <laughs> yeah, yeah that's 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 got to be it right there you know he's um he's a real sweet little guy and uh he's um kind of struggling against this boundaries of school and that sort of thing and you know these new behavioral expectations but he's how old he's, is he he's five He's just started oh, kindergarten yes. this fall, so yeah, it's it's a that is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Well, I do have one more question for you. Okay. So, uh, Matt Parsons, you go into your secret closet and you pull out your magic crystal ball, full of magic, and you put it down on the table and you look in it, looking in your crystal ball, Matt. What do you see? Um, I see a few things. Uh, one, I will be finishing up my uh, pursuit of certain parts of Reiki. So I, I'm looking to get into Holy Fire Karuna Reiki uh, very shortly. That's that's my next step up um, as far as you know what I'm interested in learning. Um, so that that's primarily so that I can serve people of a Christian faith um, that feel like Jesus is the only spiritual source they're willing to connect to, um, there is a, a Jesus Reiki now. So um, that's that's what I'm going to do um, next as far as my Reiki studies go. Um, as far as uh, martial arts go, looking into the, the crystal ball, um, I've been working with Nick Delmich here lately for Han Shi Yichuan. So I, I really see a lot of uh, deepening of my Yichuan studies and uh, um, Tim White mentioned recently that he wanted to restart, um, you know, some more meditation classes. So I see, um, you know, some more Bagua and uh, uh, more like traditional Japanese Reiki instruction coming up very shortly. So uh, I'm looking forward to those uh, new classes. And then I'm also seeing um, expansion. So I'm, I'm trying to think of, of what to call it. The concept is kind of like a martial arts tavern, right? So the idea that, you know, you, you have taverns throughout where you travel and each of these places you could like come and, and study for a little while and then, and then go away. Um, you know, so like maybe little retreat centers um, throughout the country. That's, that's my ultimate goal um, is to have like a multi-location like martial arts instructional uh, retreat center, uh, not just for fighting, but also meditation aspects as well, because the, the Nagang is really where you're going to get a lot of the martial and meditative stuff to connect. Well, you can get a bunch of Minnesotans if you have that retreat in February. Yeah. <laughs> down at your house. Yeah, you know, we do have a lot of snowbirds down here, um, particularly from Canada. They, they come down... Uh, I met a billionaire from Canada a few years ago at a cigar shop who was a snowbird and, and uh, he, uh, really interesting guy, very generous with his booze. Uh, I've never had $500 port wine before I met him. So <laughs> That's a whole nother world. That's another, that's another subject we'll, we'll talk about off camera. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that's, well, that's Matt, my this has been absolutely, uh, this has been great. It's been really fun. Uh, I really appreciate you. You know, we had talked about trying to squeeze this in before the holiday season. And I really appreciate that, you know, we, we found this time. Um, uh, I'd like to do some more. 
do some more with you. I definitely want to talk to you. Obviously, as I've said, we, we've got a lot to talk about off off uh, line and off camera. Yeah. But uh, I'd like to thank you uh, for your honesty, uh, for your insights. It's been really good. You got great energy, and I really appreciate you in my life. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for being in my life too, Sufi Ray. I really appreciate you and everything you have put out there. Um, everybody, if if you haven't already, go get real gold. Does not fear the fire. That that's just got so much treasure in that book. It's, Thank you. It's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Well, stay tuned. I've got a couple more podcasts coming. Um, uh, I've got one more installa in installation of Paul Gallagher, who I, I'm hoping to you to um, hook up with and talk to. And uh, I did uh, reach out to him, so and, hopefully uh, he gets just some been time. Great. So, <laughs> uh, everybody, thank you so much. Make sure you um, you know subscribe and like and all that. I really do appreciate all of your comments and uh, all the feedback. And, and uh, I do want to plug your Patreon, so. Ray. It's it's really awesome. Um, you know, if, if you guys haven't taken a look already, Ray's got a number of gems, uh, old masters filmed, you know, stuff like that on his Patreon that, um, you know, five bucks a month. What, what more do you want? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 um, uh, uh, you know, we, I all, we all have to die. We all have to go in the grave and, and all those videotapes and CDs and, and books and stuff that I have. I don't think there's enough room in my, my grave. So I'm going to make sure it's all out there before I go. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Happy holidays, Matt. I hope you guys have a blast this, this uh, dark time of the year.